<coughs> All right, this is just a follow-up to the last video. Um, I'm going to give you some examples of your bike controller wiring. Um, two purposes for this. One is you can use this to diagnose the problem, and the other is you can make sure you're doing your wiring correct if you're just now installing a new display or a new controller. Um, first thing I want to start off with is some information about your throttles. Um, now these are the, I'm talking about Hall effects throttles, not potentiometers. If you're using a pot, then I, it's uh, totally different. Well, it's not totally different, but the, the readings are going to be a different value. So the potentiometer, you can just find the, the input and output side and, and get a resistance between them and turn it and you'll see that happen. But with a Hall effects type, um, you can you can't measure activity other than through without voltage present so But you can verify that the coil in the throttle is good um, With a simple ohm check So you're going to take your meter put it on resistance and you're going to probe your battery negative and your reference side I'll Try to get it in there It's a little tricky Okay, and once we're on there, got to do that without touching them. Okay, now you should be seeing approximately 1.2 thousand ohms. So 1.1 to 1.3 or 4 kilo ohms is, is safe. Okay, it'll operate. But if your resistance is a lot higher than that, your throttle will read a little bit lower, but it sh should still work. Um, so this tells you this one's good. Now you're not going to see resistance between your battery negative and return or your reference and return unless this thing has some residual voltage in it. If you probe after you've had it plugged in and activated, you might see about 4 million ohms and it'll start to decay. That's just what you're seeing there is residual voltage walking out of it into your meter. Um, so we'll move on from there to We've tested our, our throttle. We know that the coil is good. That doesn't mean it's good, but that, that means the wires are not broken, okay? Now, we're looking at here. Let's see if I can get the camera turned. That. So you see I've got an error eight on this. And that's just telling me that the throttle's unplugged. So, you've, obviously you've got to make sure that when you're uh, wiring your new throttle in, or into your new controller that you match up the reference, the the battery ground and the return lines. Okay, if you can't figure out which one is which, you can usually go by color, but here, let me show you an easy way. Coming out of the controller, you don't know, uh, you don't know which one is voltage and which one is uh, return because there's no instructions oftentimes. So what you're gonna do, I, I prefer to use a, battery negative somewhere but in this case we'll just go ahead and use this source if you're testing you want to start with your battery and not use don't rely on this because if there's something wrong with the controller you'll get bad readings here but right now i know this controller is working so i should see five volts so you'll see 4.5 to 5 volts and the return side will see nothing okay that's only for a throttle if this is a pedal assist sensor like right here and you probe it, you'll see when it's unplugged. You have to probe them unplugged or you get different readings. Um, uh, right here you should see five volts on both, on both of these lines. For, try to do that without, 4.3, five, okay. This is your pedal assist. That's how you can tell. Now, when you plug them in, this that changes. The values change because you're powering up coils. Okay, so you, now you can test your your throttle is working once you plug it in. Similarly, let me use the battery negative this time. It's a little tricky because I've got really short leads here, but let's get a battery negative so that we don't have to keep doing that with both hands. Now, with that plugged in really wish these cameras wouldn't time out because I can't see what it's looking at. Okay. Now, we'll see what the voltage is on the reference side and you'll see that it's dropped off a little bit 
because the there we go 4.36 so that tells you how much resistance is in that coil now if we go to the return side we'll see yeah we're oh, come on don't fight they always want to fight you come on okay I can't seem to get that to stay in there every time I let go it jumps out get in there now as we turn the throttle we're gonna see that climb Okay, so now you know the throttle works, okay? And we know the controller works. Even if you didn't have the motor hooked up, you'd know because you've got you've got five volts, it matches to the voltage drop of the coil, and it returns out this. Ooh, I just broke that. Okay, that's gonna give me a problem. Hang on a second, let me fix that. I'm gonna verify controller function and throttle function. I had to fix this stupid thing. So we're back in business here. All right. And the other thing I wanted to cover was the problem with. There we go. Okay. How to determine if you've got a bad controller or a miswired controller. So, what we're going to do, turn this off. We're going to pull this connector wire here, and I'll show you. You'll get instruction sheets like these, and more, more than likely they'll say something like, so red is your meter wire or your power, yellow is your wire of controller, or sometimes they call it your key lock. Anyway, that's the return wire from the red to the yellow. Now, the, re the problem with that is that I have never seen other than one controller out of hundreds where that was true. It's almost always, the yellow wire is almost always your data line. So it'll be your data, what is it, data return, I think, data receiving. No, data transmission will be your yellow, um, and your blue will actually be your key return. So what we've got here, this is the one we were just using, which worked. And you see the order that it was plugged in matched what was on the controller. So yellow went to yellow. Okay, and if I were to look at voltage on this, what you'd see when you turn that thing on, red was power in and blue was power out. And yellow and green would have been around four volt data lines. Okay, so what we're gonna do is show what happens when you have the wrong leads wired. And so I had to make up a new one because this has got those waterproof connectors on it. And on this one, I flipped the blue and the yellow. So now we're gonna be sending our power on signal down this yellow line. Oh, let me make sure that we got it, yeah. Set up the right way. Okay, I plug that into a display. We can just use the one we were using, I think. I can use this one. These are actually the same as those electric control screens. You can get these on Amazon pretty much the same thing so, oh let me turn the key on okay I'm gonna show you that it will turn it on even though even though the yellow and blue are are mismatched okay so it is on but of course we don't have any throttle function and just to make sure that that it's not pedal assist locked out see we've got nothing and the reason is because if you go now and look at your voltage to your throttle let me get that out there. So instead of seeing five volts, all right, instead of five volts, you see I've got weird voltage, 2.799. Um, that's a really good indicator. If you see around two, something like that, that's a good indication that you're flipped right here. Okay. Um, if you solve this problem and still see weird voltages here, there's a good chance the controller itself is bad. If you're gonna do a diagnostic test at this level, unplug everything else so that the only thing you're plugging in, in fact, unplug all your data lines too and use an on-off switch or a jumper 
That way you know all you're doing is turning the controller on. That way when you verify these voltages on this guy and this guy and you're getting crazy readings that are not 5 volts or 4.5 volts, you can be really certain that your controller is bad. So here you go. You got See now I got 2.8 on the uh, 5 volt for the pedal assist. Let's see if I got it on the other one. Yeah, 2.1. Now if I fix this, we'll reconnect the other one. And plug it back in on the correct type. Let's find it again here. And I'll show you on the exact same display. I mean, I know I already showed this to you with the other one, but just to be certain, certain that this is not false readings because of different displays. So we plug this one back in. This one is correct. We turn the controller on. There we go. She came on. And we'll go ahead and make sure that it's able to operate. Now the throttle is not currently plugged in, but what we're going to do now is look at our voltages again. And you'll see if I can get in there. Five volts on the throttle. And five volts on the pedal assist. Okay. So that's a good way to both that's both a good way to differentiate your pedal assist and your throttle wires and which one is which, as well as to make sure you've got this hooked up correctly, you, you know, because if you follow those instructions and they tell you yellow and you wire it to yellow and the bike doesn't work, you know, I mean, obviously go through your first checks, make sure you've actually got voltage to it, make sure it's turned on, okay? You should see voltages even if they're wrong. Make sure that your L LCD will come on and if you've got one that, that's, and you're saying, why won't it spin? Everything's working. Well, make sure pedal assist is not at zero because zero start it's not going to spin so make sure you hit that first check your throttle see if your throttles work if you get no operation unplug everybody and come back and check voltages if your voltages are funky come in here and switch your blue and yellow wire okay because it is possible that your controller and display screen aren't lying to you i just i've only seen it on one like i said every every other one that tells me that yellow is the is the key lock for these is, is incorrect. Now, if we're dealing with scooters, if we're dealing with a larger or different type of controller, uh, it's anybody's guess what your what your uh, colors are going to be, because they don't. Oftentimes, they don't have this five-pin arrangement. Now, you may have a six-pin arrangement here um, with a, like a white wire or brown wire. Don't worry about that. That's lights. Okay, that's nothing to do with data, and it's nothing to do with on/off. Okay, those. Those five there are your critical components to give you function here. Um, now, if you still don't have d data function when you get everything working and the controller's spinning and you've got it to where the wheel will turn and everything, and you still don't have uh, like speed displays, now what you may have is a controller compatibility problem, or you may need to, to go through and do some work on this. See, like I've got speed display on this display, that controller, and that motor, but if I use, and this is what's weird, this is electric bike controller, if I use the electric controller, I do not get speed output. Um, same is true if I use oh, one of these type here, I can't get display. I don't know, I'm at a loss as to what's going on there, but these guys here actually seem to work fantastic. I've been swapping them because for whatever reason they're not picky now i don't know that they have good uh they have a, a decent pos system but i don't know if they display codes because other controllers that i've had on here the other displays were giving me error 10s and this one wasn't it just didn't work i mean it came on but nothing worked so anyway that's enough for that I'm talking too much thanks for watching